Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am joined by Andy Gastworth with DLA Piper and Toco. Hi, Andy. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a separated podcast today. We're going to talk about uh, two different topics, um, one in today's session and another in the second episode that will air later this week. For this first one, I would love to focus on your role at DLA and TOCO. I know a number of folks in the ecosystem know what that is, um, but for those who don't, can you tell us a little bit about the genesis of TOCO and the development and growth of the platform to date? Sure, and thanks again for having me. It's a wonderful opportunity. So I'm Andy Gastworth. As Zenobia mentioned, I am the Chief Innovation Officer at DLA Piper, and I came here about four and a half years ago. I was uh, tasked with basically creating uh, new alternative revenue businesses uh, that were outside of traditional legal services. And one of the first uh, things that we focused on at that time was building a digital creation, a digital asset creation platform, which eventually became TOCO after some uh, various working names. And um, really what we're, we're doing at DLA and, and with TOCO and, and as part of the Hedera Council is really um, carving out new territory. And, you know, one of the things that I love hearing uh, from folks is they say, well, how did a law firm, you know, uh, which is usually not so progressive, get involved in, in doing work like this? So um, it's been a great journey. Uh, we've been happy to be part of Hedera for, for the really the most, I guess, past four years or so. And um, it's been a very interesting journey that, uh, you know, we've had a lot of lessons learned from it, which hopefully I can talk to you about it today. Awesome. We are looking forward to diving into those. I think your question was spot on, right? Like, what is a law firm doing um, getting into the asset tokenization business? So once they get beyond that first question, what has the feedback been from the market? Like what kinds of assets are you seeing customers wanting to tokenize? So we really, we had two main missions in what we were looking to do with asset tokenization. And, you know, if we look at our traditional legal work, you know, whether an asset is real estate or natural resources like a mine or infrastructure, artwork, whatever it may be, anything that you could consider as property, even intellectual property, um, the ownership of that uh, can be fractionalized just what it would normally would in, in any sort of a corporate operating agreement. The difference here is that we're leveraging technology and tokenization to actually put the ownership of those assets out into onto a, a distributed ledger technology, in this case, Hedera. And, um, we, you know, we're just changing the, the medium of which the ownership can be represented, the provenance can be, uh, you know, fully tracked. And um, we can also give additional security, KYC, AML, to transactions that normally would, would have to go through a lot of due diligence over and over again. And, and we're avoiding a lot of those intermediaries. Uh, but the two real main things that we were looking at in asset tokenization, you know, if you take uh, commercial real estate, like let's say a hundred million dollar office building, the first thing is that's not a very liquid asset. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create liquidity for assets that traditionally have poor liquidity. And then the second part of it, and this is really an, an important thing, is we're really creating a democratization of access to these assets. So whereas before, if you were going to be an investor in a $100 million office building, you would have to have significant um, you know, uh, uh, funds and resources and probably know the right people to be involved in an in a, in, in a asset uh, investment like that. If we can fractionalize and make the 
um, investment available, the asset available to the masses, then we're really doing something. And by creating that democratization and giving access to it, we're also creating further liquidity for the asset. So that's something that's very interesting to our clients who traditionally do business and have these type of assets. So we're do still doing the same legal work, but TOCO enables us with the platform to, to drive those two major initiatives, which are really game changers. And, you know, is that why organizations are choosing you? I mean, it feels like there's a lot of different tokenization platforms available out there. Yeah, I, I think that the the combination of what we always set out to do was um, our clients want us as the trusted advisor when we're doing any sort of business deal with them to make sure that we're avoiding risk, we're staying compliant, all of the regulatory bodies that you know would oversee whatever the deal may be. Are, are properly being addressed and that our clients can feel good about what they're doing and know that they've mitigated risk. Um, this is really just another way to go about it uh, with tokenization. And, you know, I, the combination of the law firm and the and the technology platform is really unique, um, not only in our industry, but um, this is why people are coming to us. They know that they can be trusted, that this is something that they can do and they can they can stay out of trouble while doing it. And I mean, this is no small feat. You guys operate in so many countries and jurisdictions. You know, how do you deal with the regulation of tokens if there is regulation in these various jurisdictions? Yeah, and I would say actually that's one of the <clears throat> current challenges, depending on where an asset is, what type of asset it is, uh, where the investors are located, uh, you know, how it's gonna be structured. That, that is going to make it um, you know, potentially difficult to actually move through the process of tokenizing an asset, getting it out through a broker dealer, a custodian, and then eventually onto an exchange. And uh, you know, part of what we're doing is not only doing the traditional legal work and structuring the deal to make sure that folks are you know, doing things the right way and that they're not introducing risk into their business, but then the other side of it is with all of the integrations and partnerships that we've built out globally, um, what we can do is we can help find that solution of the proper, you know, once we've minted the tokens, what, who, who's the proper broker dealer, custodian and eventual exchange and, and what type of token uh, it should be and where it will be traded and, and even, you know, which um, geographies can have investors coming from there or not. So, you know, again, it's that planning all the way through. Um, but until um, as digital asset tokenization comes along further and, and all of the governments are able to say, OK, this is how, you know, we, from a regulatory standpoint, this is how we'll interact moving forward. This is what the, you know, the set law is. Um, you know, it's 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 often challenging for us to find the solution at this point to to move someone through. But we have been able to do that for everyone that has uh, come to work with us at this point. Fantastic. And so it sounds like, you know, people are coming to you because it's a combination of the platform plus all of this expertise that you have um, on the legal side. I think, you know, maybe the flip side of that, though, is it's probably not that often that, you know, DLA Piper or law firms go out and build software. So how has that experience been, you know, building that building the platform? So, uh it, it started off with uh, a proof of concept about really about four years ago where, um, you know, we went ahead and we just wanted to see, hey, could we actually tokenize something? And, uh, you know, at that time, we weren't involved with Hedera. We had uh, built something uh, in the cloud on uh, with Ethereum. Uh, it was extremely slow. Uh, you know, when you're again, I'll use that hundred million dollar office building. If you're tokenizing that type of asset or, or you're trading uh, or buying and selling uh, ownership, uh, you know, you can't wait minutes to hours to see if, if your transaction went through. So uh, that was very discouraging. You know, we knew technology would come along, uh, but then, you know, very fortuitously, uh, uh, Scott Teal, who is one of the founders of TOCO, he was in New York and I was in New York uh, along with Mark Radcliffe who's also active in the in the Hedera Council uh, to really talk to Hedera and see what you guys were up to. And, uh, you know, being able to meet, you know, at that time Mance and Lehman and really talk through why Hedera was different and how it actually might address the performance issues along with really having an enterprise focus, which is our, our sweet spot with the clients that we deal with. Um, that's where things started to come together. 
Uh, we have a, had a very long development road, uh, you know, as, as with anybody who's been involved in uh, developing a product, whether it's software or something else, uh, you know, you always have that combination of uh, this seems like something we should build. And then when you're halfway through building it, someone else has already created the functionality and you're, you, you incorporate it or, or, or create relationships and partnerships. So it was a lot of that. But I will say the one thing that really uh, worked out for us is that if we had gotten to market earlier, let's say two years ago, we would have been too far ahead of the market. So in some ways, it was a blessing that it took us longer to get to production but the market wasn't ready for us yet. Uh, and we happened to really be, you know, in a, in a very good place where we hit with our capabilities when the market was really starting to embrace it. So that's definitely a lesson learned of, uh, you know, you always want to move fast, but uh, you need to be gauging the market, and make sure you're not too early to the market where you don't have any business to do. We would have died on the vine if we had gotten there two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. And I think, you know, you make a good point. I, I in some ways, it's like, um, it's like children, right? The days are long, but the years are short. I don't think mm -hmm. people realize how much effort goes into building these kinds of products and how much time and energy and um, thought around what that entire ecosystem has looked like. Yeah, um, and also I, I would say, you know, since we're a, a global firm and we do have resources everywhere, you know, Scott and his team are located in Hong Kong. I'm on the East Coast of, of the U.S., um, when somebody figures out how to uh, get rid of time zones and, and make everybody <laughs> on the same time, life will probably be a lot easier. It's made for some very long days uh, and six day weeks, certainly with uh, with Hong Kong coming on board earlier. So there still are, are a number of things we haven't solved, uh, you know, as, as, as a civilization at this point, which have made it difficult. Yes, I think that's certainly a, a multi trillion dollar idea. Um, but, you know, you mentioned that sort of that was one of the lessons learned in terms of time to market. As you think about, you know, guiding other organizations, big or small, um, any other lessons that you'd share with them? Yeah, I think especially if if your main business is not um, agile software development, it's often challenging. And especially in larger organizations, you'll have leadership who will come to you and say, well, you know, let's just throw more developers at this. You know, that'll make it go faster. And and what you have to know is that actually, I believe that a smaller and more agile team, um, you know, we have great partners with with Luther Systems, with BCW. They were critical in working with us in, in a very agile methodology to get to market. Um, but what I always tell my leadership is, you know, this is not a coal mine. You just can't throw more coal miners at it to dig more coal. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and then also having the flexibility in, in an agile or a DevOps methodology where, uh, you know, you have to expect that things are going to change as you go, whether, you know, things are coming to market or, or you realize that there's a feature that you need to build in or an integration you need to build in. And that flexibility, with that smaller team uh, allows for better communication and collaboration. And that's definitely one of the things that uh, allowed us to be successful. Okay, so Andy, say somebody wants to do something like tokenize a real estate asset, a big building. Can you walk us through the process, you know, how that starts, how it interacts, um, you know, those transactions interact with the Hedera network, um, you know, the whole life cycle of that? Sure. So the first thing that we would do is if, uh, you know, someone reaches out to us or it's an existing client, and, and in your case, you know, like you said, with the real estate, as the example, um, you know, we would do a, first a, a quick feasibility study, uh, making sure that um, the type of asset that they're looking at, uh, where it where it's located, um, who are the potential investors, uh, where they're looking to get to from an exchange perspective, and and who might be the um, uh, folks that would actually be participating in the deal overall. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that there is a path to doing that. And, um, you know, what we have done is through our partnerships and integrations, we will do all the legal work and then we'll mint the tokens according to whatever the parameters are for the deal. But we're not a broker dealer. We're not a custodian and we're not an exchange. So all of that work um, is through partnerships and integrations that we've built into the TOCO system. The main thing that we really need to make sure with with the clients is that uh, when we're going to do a deal, is that they have a risk mitigated way to um, basically deliver that all the way through. And that really is the biggest challenge, as I mentioned before, that, um, you know, we 
depending on those geographies and, and the specifics of the deal, finding the the right broker dealer, the right mm-hmm. custodian, and the right exchange that um, these people can do their business on is the is the key thing in shepherding the deal from the traditional legal work and the minting of the tokens all the way through to a, a client getting onto an exchange and being able to buy and have their tokens bought and sold accordingly. Um, the uh, other part of it is also, you know, talking to them about uh, where where is this going to live? So, you know, our first uh, default uh, response is always based on uh, the, the speed of transactions, the low gas prices or cost of transactions, and the energy efficiency of Hedera. We would prefer to see them on the Hedera uh, token service. Uh, if, you know, they insist on moving out to another DLT, we can support that, but where we're always starting for, you know, those main reasons, as well as the risk uh, mitigation and the enterprise approach of, of Hedera, al- along with the public facing part of it, um, you know, we feel that that's the best place for them to land. Well, we love to hear that. So, Andy, you know, I think um, we are obviously in a, um, a crypto bear market. Um, and, you know, while that's never great to see, I think as you look at traditional technology um, cycles and life cycles, that's where a lot of the innovation happens and where a lot of the real building can get done. Um, So as you look ahead for Toco, you know, what do you see happening in the marketplace? And, you know, can you give us a preview of what you all are going to be focused on for maybe the next six to 12 months? Yeah. So I I think you hit on a really important part, you know, uh, there are attorneys at our firm globally who do uh, work within crypto, um, but that's not really the focus of, of Toco, and it's really not the focus at all. Um, we're looking at, you know, again, digital asset creation. We're basing it on real world assets. You know, we do also do NFTs, but real world assets is where, you know, I think the differentiator lies for Toco. Uh, and it's important to explain to people when you're coming in with a solution that's a DLT solution or a technology solution, and it, it, it revolves around tokenization. The first thing you have to make people understand is this is not crypto. You know, let's move on to what we're actually right. solving as a business problem here and, and how we're moving you through again in a risk mitigation fashion. Um, but, you know, to to answer your question about, you know, what are we also focusing on? You know, to- asset tokenization is one part of TOCO. And then there's a very l- another very large part of TOCO, uh, which is really wrapped more around uh, you know, environmental, social and governance, ESG. And, you know, a that's topic, right, a very hot topic. And, you know, when you look at Again, our clients, you know, if you look at large pharmaceutical companies, technology companies, these companies have very complex supply chains. They know they need to drive towards sustainability and they need to be able to manage up and down that supply chain or just through their business processes. And it's really important for us to continue building out our ESG capabilities. We have excellent um, quals and references at the firm from a, a, a legal and a regulatory and a compliance standpoint for ESG, and especially over in, in the EU. You know, obviously that's been much more accelerated than it has in the U.S. But this is what we see as really one of the largest business initiatives that we'll have from a legal, uh, you know, services perspective as well as a technology perspective on TOCO. And we have been building solutions um, with other council members uh, at Hedera, as well as with uh, partners in industry to have, you know, additional differentiators. And I think the important thing, again, just like we were talking about before with, you know, not start, you know, making people understand this is not just a crypto uh, play, if you will. What's important with ESG is just because um, it is driving towards sustainability and because it may be, um, you know, supporting a green initiative, that doesn't mean that what we're actually working on with our client uh, is not a profitable uh, endeavor for them that has a strong business case and return on investment with the, um, you know, added feature of their driving towards sustainability. So um, that's something that we always focus on. If we have a strong business case, we know we have a good discussion with our client uh, ahead of us, and then we can help them drive towards that sustainability while solving actual business problems with tokenization and and Hedera as the DLT. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. And I think you may be giving us a little bit of a sneak peek into the next podcast, but we will hold off on talking yep. about that. Um, ESG um, is a hot topic and uh, it, it really threads through a lot of things and it's it's really applicable to everyone. And that's, uh, you know, why I think everyone should, you know, uh, between this uh, podcast and the next, you know, investigate ESG a little bit. And, um, you know, we'll be talking about how we're really driving uh, towards that on, on Hedera.
Indeed. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, for the audience here, please stay tuned. We'll have another episode with Andy coming up very soon. And um, thank you so much for your time today. Andy, we'll chat soon. Thank you very much. And anyone who's interested in TOCO, you can find us on the, on the internet at toco.network is our official website. And thanks again for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.